Hey, I'm Lucas Kitchen, and I want to talk to you about Matthew chapter 7. Why Matthew chapter 7? Well, Matthew chapter 7 gets fired at me pretty often because I believe in faith alone salvation. What is faith alone salvation? Faith alone salvation is the understanding that Jesus was very clear when he said, those who believe in him have eternal life. Period. Zip. That's it. That's how it goes. That salvation comes by faith alone, not by works. Now, there are lots of people out there that say they teach faith alone, but when you listen to how they describe the gospel, there's works involved. And so I call that a faith plus works salvation. The problem with that is the Bible doesn't support it. But there's some misunderstood verses that get tossed around, uh, supposedly, that support this. One of the, uh, one of the most common that gets thrown at us is um, verses from Matthew chapter 7. There's actually two different sets of verses that um, get quoted a lot to try to support f- um, faith plus work salvation, uh, but they actually appear right next to each other, so I thought I'd make one video to talk about both. Let me show you the verse that is often quoted um, at us trying to prove that uh, salvation requires both faith plus works. Here's what it says in uh, uh, in verse 19 of chapter 7. It says, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire, so you'll recognize them by their fruit. Whoa, okay, well, okay, that sounds, that sounds like what it's saying is that you'll recognize if someone is a Christian by their good works, their fruit. So their fruit is their good works, supposedly, And it sounds like what he's saying is you can recognize if someone is actually a believer by their good works. Okay, okay. Well, is that actually what it says? Well, I'll give you a guess, and you probably only need one. It's not actually what it says. Now, this is not really complicated. Some things take a little bit of a technical explanation. All this one takes is for you to jump up a few verses and start at the beginning of the section, and you'll realize who he's talking about, okay? So is he saying that you can recognize a Christian by good works? Well, let's jump back up to verse 15 and see if that uh, if that holds up. It says this in verse 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You'll recognize them by their fruit. So is it talking about Christians? Is it saying that you can recognize a Christian by their fruit? No! It's saying that you can recognize a false prophet by their fruit. And in many cases, a false prophet is not even a believer. It's possible that maybe someone's believed and has eternal life and is teaching false things. But generally, uh, we think of false prophets as unbelievers. So he's not even talking about believers here. He's talking about false prophets. And he says you can recognize a false prophet by their fruit. Do they, uh, do they have good fruit or bad fruit? If they have bad fruit, they're a false prophet. What does that mean? Well, basically, it means that if, if a prophet makes a prediction that doesn't come true, that's bad fruit, you know that he's a false prophet. So, that verse isn't saying what you think it says, if that's what you thought it says. It doesn't say that you can recognize Christians by their fruit. It says you can recognize uh, unbelieving false prophets. Potentially believers sometimes, but generally unbelieving false prophets. So that case is closed, okay? And that's part of why I'm making this video, because I want you to see that, that that verse is talking about false prophets. Now let's talk about the next set of verses that often gets quoted as. So let me just kind of restate my case so that we're on the same page. I am confident that Jesus teaches, especially through the, the Gospel of John, that salvation comes by belief in him for eternal life. That's it. Works are expected of believers, but it's not required for salvation. Okay, so when I talk about that, often people will quote these verses to me. They'll say this, verse 21 of chapter 7 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. So here's how this one, this argument usually goes. They'll start by saying, see, these are people who believed but they didn't have works. Is that right? Is that really what it says? It says, actually, that they didn't do the will of the Father. So the question then is, well, what is the will of the Father? Is the will of the Father that we do good works? Well, in some sense it is. For believers, we're expected to do good works. 
but for unbelievers is the will of the Father that they do good works. Well, actually, we don't have to guess. The book of John tells us. So it's actually really clear in uh, chapter, what chapter I'm in? Chapter 6 of the Gospel of John, verse 40, Jesus is speaking here. He says this, For this is the will of my Father. So he's talking to unbelievers here. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have eternal life, and I will raise Him up on the last day. So when Matthew 7 says that these people are not allowed into the kingdom because they didn't do the will of the Father, he's not talking about good works. He's talking about God's will that these people would believe. That's the bottom line. Well, now you look at this and you say, well, but they say, Lord, Lord. Doesn't that mean that they're believers? Let's read it again. Uh, for not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who do, do the will of my Father in heaven. So we know that the will of God for unbelievers is to believe. In fact, there's other places that say that God wants everybody to believe. So we know that's the will. So we know that they haven't believed, but why do they say, Lord, Lord? Well, this is talking about a situation where they're standing probably before the throne of God. And it's very clear at that point who Lord, Lord is. And so them saying Lord, Lord does not mean that they believed during their life in faith alone. What they probably believed is that they were going to get in on the basis of of their works. And here's the crazy thing about this section. People will say, see, these are people who believe but didn't have works. But the next verses actually contradict that idea. Look at what they say. Verse 22, it says, On that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, and do many miracles in your name? Then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. Wow. Okay. So people will throw this verse out supposedly because it's talking about people who believed but did no good works. That's not what it's actually saying. If you read it and think about what's going on here, it's talking about unbelievers who did good works. It's really the opposite of what people are, are picking up from it. Okay, So it's pretty clear that these are people that did not believe in Jesus for eternal life. They did not believe faith alone. What they did is they believed in their works. They supposedly were prophesying. They supposedly were casting out demons. They supposedly were doing all kinds of good works, but they missed the single most important part, the will of God that they would believe in Jesus alone for eternal life. So what these people are doing are stand, is that they're standing before the throne of God and they're saying, I should be led into heaven because I did these good things. So this is actually a, this is a set of people who believe their works are going to get them into heaven. And they did not do the will of God, which is to believe. Now here's the other thing. It says, and I think this trips people up, what you need to notice here is it's the people who are tooting their own horn. Jesus never agrees with them that they prophesied. In fact, notice that this comes right after the section about false prophets. So, is it possible that we're still talking about false prophets? I think we are. So, it's the person who's standing before Jesus that says, I prophesied in your name. I think what Jesus is saying is, no, you didn't. You think you did, but you didn't. Is it possible that the next things um, are fall in the same category? Uh, the person says that he drove out demons in Jesus' name, and he did miracles in Jesus' name. Look, if we're talking about false prophets, I can think of a few, at least ones that I'm pretty sure are false prophets. If you ever watch TV and see these uh, tele-evangelists that make all kinds of claims and prophecies and whatever... I'd be pretty confident that some of those aren't believers. That some of those have not done the basic will of the Father, which is to believe in Jesus for eternal life. And so this verse is not saying that someone needs works to get into heaven. In fact, it's kind of saying the opposite. It's kind of saying that the person that thinks they can get into heaven by works is dead wrong. And in fact, what's going to happen is they're going to have a rude awakening on the day when they stand before Jesus. 
And so what this basically comes down to is what John, uh, what John records Jesus saying. I'm going to read it one more time. In verse 40, he says, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have eternal life, and I will raise Him up on the last day. So these people in Matthew 7, they didn't fit that criteria. They did not believe. They did not place their faith alone in Christ for eternal life. So that is what's going on in Matthew 7. I think it's pretty clear that these verses do not support uh, works plus faith salvation. In fact, they do quite the opposite. Thanks for watching.